COVID-19 vaccine safe and suitable for pregnant women. Government studying the need for COVID-19 vaccine's third booster shot. Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News at 10. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, the Pfizer, BioNTech, Sinovac and AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines currently in use in Malaysia are suitable for pregnant women based on the Health Ministry's updated guidelines. Coordinating Minister for the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, Kairi Jamaluddin, said the Pfizer, BioNTech vaccine remained recommended while the AstraZeneca and Sinovac vaccines have been classified as suitable for the group. AstraZeneca tidak lagi dikontraindikasikan kepada kehamilan dan Sinovac pula disyorkan oleh laporan interim Badan Kesihatan Sedunia ataupun WHO untuk ibu hamil dan menyusu oleh kerana manfaatnya yang jauh lebih besar daripada potensi risiko yang dikaji. Kairi added a total of 109,607 pregnant women have registered for COVID-19 vaccination via the Meister Joshua application so far. Well, of the total, 11,663 women were expected to give birth in August and the group would be given the priority for vaccination. He said, adding that about 10,000 pregnant mothers have received their appointment dates. On another note, Kyrie said the government is studying the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines against the Delta variant and the need for a third booster shot. The minister said developed countries were procuring vaccines for next year as they were mulling the need for a third booster shot. So, uh, kita pun sedang kaji data uh, untuk... Uh, supaya kita dapat uh, membuat keputusan sama ada kita perlu mula perundingan untuk buat perolehan vaksin untuk tahun depan for next year. Kyrie said this after inspecting the process of administering COVID-19 vaccines to pregnant mothers at the Malaysian International Trade and Exhibition Center, MyTech Vaccination Center, PPV, in Kuala Lumpur today. Well, he said the data was needed so that Malaysia could decide whether to start vaccine procurement negotiations for next year. Well, Kyrie said 90% of new infections in the United Kingdom are caused by the Delta variant. Well, about 1.99 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccines are needed to inoculate workers in the manufacturing sector under the private or rather public-private partnership COVID-19 industry immunization program known as PICAS. Well, according to Minister of International Trade and Industry, Dato Sri Mahmoud Azmin Ali, the number was needed to achieve herd immunity for the manufacturing sector by the end of September. Dan oleh itu saya memohon uh, kerjasama daripada MOSTI dan juga KKM dan Alhamdulillah both ministries have been very supportive to MITI and PICAS. Uh, kita perlukan uh, untuk bulan depan in uh, June, we need about 600,000 doses of vaccine. Begitu juga dengan bulan Ogos, another 600,000 dan pada bulan September 795,000 doses. So, bekalan vaksin ini penting untuk menjayakan program PIKAS dan yang berhormat hari bagi pihak Mosti telah memberi jaminan in July PIKAS should be allocated 600,000 doses untuk meneruskan program PIKAS ini bagi bulan Julai dan kita jangka seperti saya sebut tadi by end of September we should be able to complete the whole exercise and insyaallah kita akan mencapai tahap herd immunity dalam sektor pembuatan 
Well, the first PCAS PBV in Negri Sumbilan will begin its operation on 5th July with a capacity of administering 1,500 doses a day. About 2.25 million workers in the manufacturing sector nationwide are targeted to receive their vaccine jabs through the implementation of PCAS. Well, the number of doses of the COVID-19 vaccine administered in Malaysia surpassed the 7 million mark as a total of 7,039,072 jabs have been distributed. Well, according to Health Minister Dato Sri Dr. Adam Baba, this comprises 5,072,714 recipients of the first dose, along with 1,966,358 recipients who have completed both doses. Well, meanwhile, a total of 215,968 COVID-19 vaccine injections were given yesterday. Dr. Sri Dr. Adham in a Twitter post said of the total vaccine injections given yesterday, 148,380 were for the first dose, while 67,588 were for the second dose injections. He said the state which recorded the highest recipients who completed both doses of vaccine were Selangor with 262,635. This was followed by Sarawak with 202,741 recipients, Johor with 201,340, Perag with 181,545, and Kuala Lumpur 170,594 recipients. The number of new COVID-19 cases in the country stayed above the 5,000 mark for four consecutive days with 5,803 cases reported in the last 24 hours. Well, according to a statement by its Director General, Tansri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, only 10 of them were import cases, while the remaining were local transmissions. With this, the cumulative number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia now stands at 728,462. Selangor remains the state with the highest recorded with number of infections, with 2,108 cases reported, followed by Negri Sambilan with 741 and Kuala Lumpur 628 cases. Meanwhile, 5,193 recoveries were recorded, bringing the total recovery tally to 662,931, equivalent to a 91% recovery rate. Following this development, there are currently 60,646 active cases being monitored by the MOH. Now, this includes 866 cases treated in intensive care units or ICUs and 435 of them requiring respiratory aid. The MOH also reported 81 new COVID-19 related deaths in the past 24 hours, taking the country's death toll to 4,884. Well, small business owners who have yet to register for vaccination with the local authorities or PBT may do so under the Community Vaccine Mobilization or MOVAC program. The program, which is set to launch on 6 July, will benefit around 500,000 small business owners registered under PBTs nationwide. The initiative is an effort to protect the target group while dealing with the other members of the community and carrying out their businesses. According to Housing and Local Government Minister Dato Zuraida Kamarudin, MOVAC is fully equipped with facilities and ecosystem as per Health Ministry's standards. Kita lihat ketika ini 10 tu dah memadai, uh, campur dengan mafin 12 lah, ada 12 bas. Uh, by 1st of July, 12 tu dah boleh gerak dah. Tapi sekarang 3 pun dah boleh gerak kan? Ya. Ha? 3 dah boleh gerak. So jadi kalau ada keperluan, kita akan tambahkan lagi. The implementation of MOVAC program is to expedite vaccination rate, especially those in the rural communities. Well, in line with the National Recovery Plan announced by Prime Minister Tansuri Mohyeddin Yassin, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTAC, has prepared a holistic framework for the Tourism Recovery Plan. Its Minister, Dr. Sri Nancy Shukri, in a statement said the Ministry outlined three phases to help expedite the vaccination program nationwide. Well, this will subsequently lead to the success of the COVID-19 free destination program. Well, for the first phase, Langkawi was selected as a pilot travel destination for the program. And the government agreed to increase vaccinations to the people of the island by turning the Langkawi Craft Complex into a vaccine distribution center or PBV in July. 
Well, for the second phase, MOTAC will expand the program to the country's most popular resort islands, such as Redang, Perhentian, Pangkor, and Tioman. Meanwhile, the third phase involves engagement sessions between the ministry and all state governments to highlight selected tourist attractions. G1 and G2 contractors who are appointed by local authorities can apply for approval to operate during the movement control order at the nearest police station. Inspector General of Police Dato Sri Akril Sani Abdullah Sani said each application should be attached with the company's commission of Malaysia registration document and proof of the project to be carried out. While well, commenting further, Dato Sri Akril Sani said the approval letter issued by the Royal Malaysia Police or PDRM is subject to compliance to the current standard operating procedure or SOP to contain the spread of COVID-19. He also said that for self-employed workers such as plumbers, maintenance workers, roadside hawkers who have no employers, the movement approval obtained from PDRM is one-off, while the approval letter obtained earlier can still be used. The IGP added that a special meeting of the National Security Council, that's the MKN, on COVID-19 management recently decided that G1 and G2 contractors who were appointed by local authorities to carry out small-scale construction work are allowed to operate immediately with the approval of the Ministry of Housing and Local Government for PDRM. Coming up, six individuals, including three policemen, arrested. Stay tuned. Sokongan anda kepada kami di saluran berita ATM yang sentiasa memberikan berita yang terbaik dan terkini dari lokasi dan yang pastinya sahih untuk anda. Selamat menyambut ulang tahun saluran berita RTM yang pertama. Kami sentiasa bersiap sedia untuk menyampaikan pelbagai informasi penting untuk anda semua rakyat Malaysia. Selamat ulang tahun saluran berita RTM. Teguh kita menang bersama. Semestinya, saluran berita ATM, saluran yang terkini, tepat, padat dan sahih menyampaikan maklumat kepada anda. Saluran berita ATM, saluran aspirasi masyarakat. Well, News at 10 continues. Well, the Sigil Tinggi Perskolahan Malaysia SCPM 2020 results will be announced on 1st July. Malaysian Examinations Council, MPM, in a statement today said candidates can get their results beginning noon on the 1st of July at their official website. Well, elaborating further on the matter, MPM said that candidates can also check their results via short messaging service or SMS by typing STPM, IC number and index number with spacing in between these words and send it to the designated number between 11 a.m. on 1st July and noon on 9th July. The statement also said that the results will be sent to the emails of candidates beginning 11 a.m. on 1st July. For candidates without internet access, the State Education Department, District Education Office and schools will convey the result via other suitable methods after this group has been identified. While well, a total of 47,000 and eight candidates set for the SCPM examination, which was held from 8th March this year. The government will ensure that its plan on making internet access available nationwide, especially in the rural areas, is achieved. Well, Minister and Prime Minister's Department for Economic Affairs, Dato Sri Mustafa Mohammed, said this would include the transformation of 873 community internet centers or PIKs nationwide as educational centers to facilitate home-based learning and teaching or PDPR. Well, Dato Sri Mustafa said the PIK transformation is also to turn them into entrepreneurial trade centers like in Kelantan, where 70 PIKs have been selected for the project which began this year. In addition, he said the government had also allocated over 700 million ringgit to improve digital infrastructure involving internet access in Kelantan for the period 2020 to the year 2022. Well, he also said the allocation was for the upgrading of 1,232 communication towers, construction of 85 new towers and extending high-speed 
fiber optic network to 54,904 premises. The minister added that when the projects are completed, 4G network coverage nationwide will reach 96.3% in 2022. To date, there are 1,245 cell towers throughout Kelantan, of which 93.15% are for 4G services, 95.98% for 3G and 97.14% 2G. Well, three policemen were among six individuals arrested in connection with the theft of a safe containing 400,000 ringgit from a logistics company last Wednesday. The Kedah police chief, Dato Kamarul Zaman Mamad, said all the suspects aged between 30 and 50 were arrested in a series of arrests at homes and offices in Al Star. Dato Kamarul said the safe was discovered missing at about 1.30 a.m. last Wednesday following a break-in. And following a report lodged, a man was arrested a few hours later and his arrest led to the arrest of five other suspects, including three policemen from the Kota Star Police Headquarters. He said the police were able to recover more than 200,000 ringgit from the suspects and were looking for the remaining loot, believed to be with the other two suspects still at large. He also said the suspects were believed to have prized open the front door of the premises after disconnecting the power supply to enter the building. The state police chief added that the suspects are in remand until 1st July to facilitate investigation and the police have also launched a manhunt for the remaining two suspects. Coming up in sports, national diver Cheong Jun Hung re qualify for 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Well, it's good news for us, says national diver athlete Cheong Jun Hong has regained her ticket to the Tokyo Olympics next month after a dramatic U-turn by the International Swimming Federation of FINA today. Well, the news was shared by Olympic Council of Malaysia, OCM President Tan Sri Mohamed Norza Zakaria on his social media account earlier today. Well, in a Facebook posting, Youth and Sports Minister Dato Sri Rizal American 9 American welcomed this positive turn of events and thanked the Olympic Council of Malaysia and the national swimming body for their hard work in ensuring that national divers perform their best and qualified on merit. Last Wednesday, Jun Hong had missed the cut for the Tokyo Olympics after FINA decided to allow only the best 15 divers in the women's 10-meter individual platform in the Diving World Cup to qualify for the world's biggest sporting event. In the 2021 World Cup, Jung Hong finished last in the women's 10-meter individual platform semifinals, but still emerged among the top 18 divers in the championship to qualify for the Olympics before FINA decided to only allow the top 15 divers to go to Tokyo. Jung Hong, 31, will now join four other national women divers who had qualified earlier for the Olympics, namely Pandalila Rinong Pam, Nur Davita Sabri, Wendy Ng Yan Yi, and Leong Moon Yi. An early second half goal by Argentine Leandro Velasquez was enough for Johor Darul Taksim or JDT to edge Thailand's Ratchaburi FC 1 0 in the Asian Football Confederation or AFC Champions League Group G match at the Raja Mangala Stadium in Bangkok yesterday. Well, the Southern Tiger squad had the opportunity to edge themselves ahead of the opponent. However, a penalty kick awarded to them was wasted when Burson da Silva's shot was saved by Ratchaburi goalkeeper Kampol Papun Tarkul. JDT's long-awaited breakthrough came just a minute after the break when Leandro got the ball, turned and fired past the opponent's keeper. Leandro nearly put JDT 2 0 up in the 51st minute, but his shot sailed just wide while Mohamed Safawi Rasid also missed by inches when he tried to curl the ball home from almost the same position in the 68th minute. Well, currently, Nagoya Grampus lead Group G with six points after two matches. JDT, well, three, are in second spot ahead of FC Pohang Steelers, also with three points, but on goal difference, while Ratchaburi FC have yet to collect a single point. And with that, we conclude today's edition of News at 10. Now, top story, COVID-19 vaccine safe and suitable for pregnant women. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow on updates at noon at 12.30 p.m. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos. Do stay tuned to Saloran Brita RTM and have a lovely night ahead.